This is from the AP Physics C exam, 1998 M2. So you can. So the problem is that you have a bar with two masses. The bar has negligible mass of length, and it's of length L. Each mass is the same with mass M. And you've got another object over here traveling this way with initial velocity v0 and mass m. Uh, the first problem is to describe the kinetic energy after the collision. So, so to start, we know that the momentum, the initial momentum of the system has to equal the initial, the final momentum of the system. You know the initial velocity is v0, v0. The initial mass is, um, or actually the, so the initial momentum of this is mvo, and the initial momentum of this, I'll add the two together, is 2m times zero, because it doesn't have any velocity. The final momentum is the whole system, which has mass 3m and velocity vf, and that's what we're going to solve for. So if you simplify this, that's mvo equals 3mvf. Then you end up with uh, your final velocity equaling one third vo. So now, you know, kinetic energy final equals one half m. I'm gonna use big M here. Your mass of your system times velocity final squared. And we know the final mass of our system is 3m. And velocity final is one third vo. Simplifying this, you get one third or one half. Or three halves m times one ninth vo squared. This becomes one sixth m vo squared. So the next part of the problem is to find the change in kinetic energy, which is kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. And we know the kinetic energy final, we just calculated, was 1 sixth mvo squared. And we know the initial kinetic energy of our system is just the kinetic energy of that, because this is at rest. And the kinetic energy here is 1 half mvo squared. Subtract the two, you get 1 sixth minus 3 sixth mvo squared equals um, negative one third mvo squared. So now in part b of the problem, we have a similar setup except the mass went from here to here. Um, now it's striking at the very end of your bar. And the first part of the problem is actually not to do anything with velocity, it's to calculate the center of mass of your object from the left point over here. Um, the formula for center of mass is the sum of the distance times the mass over the sum of the mass. Um, right after the collision, and it's asking for the center of mass right after the collision. And so right after the collision, our mass is 3m, 1, 2, 3. And the sum of the radiuses, here it's m times 0, because it's 0 distant from the end, so that's 0, plus you'll have 2m a whole l distance away, plus 2m l. Simplifying this gives you 2 thirds l. And that's your, that's, so that's 
about here. This is now your center of mass. The next part of the problem is to describe. Did you pause it? The next part of the problem is to find the velocity of the center of mass after the collision. Um, because the velocity of this object linearly was in that direction, you know your center of mass is also going to have that linear velocity. Um, the third part of this problem is to find the velocity after the collision, the uh, translational velocity after the collision, which, similar to the first part, you do initial, initial momentum equals final momentum, because there's no other uh, impulses or forces on the system. You have MVO plus 2M times 0 equals... Um, 3m vs because at the end you have a whole system of three masses with a fi yeah, final yeah, velocity. Sort of. So you end up with 3m vs equals mvo vs once again equals one third vo. The next part of the problem asks for the angular speed right after the collision. Um, so we're going to use angular momentum to solve this part. Um, our initial angular momentum is going to be uh, the cross product of the linear momentum and the uh, distance um, from the center, from the axis of rotation to the um, mass. So that's going to be um, mv, or mv naught, times this distance. So that's going to be one third L, um, and then the sine angle between them, which is going to be 90 degrees. So initial angular momentum becomes one third mv naught L. Okay. So then the um, L final is just going to be. Moment of inertia times angular speed, and this is what we're trying to find this problem. So, um, there are uh, no um, external torques, so the angular momentum is going to be conserved, and um, we have that I omega is going to equal one third and we not L. So, we need to find moment of inertia. Um, the way to do that. We can just use our moment of inertia definition. So um, every mass times the uh, radius squared. So we're going to have 2m times 1 third l squared plus m times 2 thirds l squared. So m um, times 2 thirds l squared. So we can do some math. That is going to come out to, I'll save you the trouble of the math. Um, it's going to come out to 2 thirds ml squared. Um, so we can plug that in here. Um, 2 thirds ml squared. Omega equals 1 third ml. So we can cross some things out. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're going to end up with, um, if I start, yeah, yeah. end up with 2 yeah, yeah. L omega yeah. equals um, V naught. Yeah. So, it turns out that the angular speed is going to be equal to V naught over 2 times the length of the rod. So the last part of the problem asks for the change in kinetic energy um, before this collision, right after the collision. Um, initial kinetic energy, half m v naught squared. Um, now, you have to remember the kinetic energy final is going to involve translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. Um, so we have... Um, so one, six, 
and the knot e squared is half plus half i omega squared. So, change of tech energy, and final minus four. So we have one six and the knot squared. Uh, plus half. And let's substitute some things in, shall we? Two thirds m l squared for moment of inertia. And um, omega squared. Now, if you remember from the last problem, omega equals uh, v naught over 2 l. So let's substitute it in. We get um, v naught squared over. Uh, 4 L squared. So this is final, so now minus um, initial kinetic energy. So minus half and V naught squared. V naught squared. So um, I'm going to take this line and move it up so that we have space to work out the map. So here's our um, change of kinetic energy. Uh, we can do some canceling out. These cancel out. These cancel out. Um, so we're gonna, and then we're, we can subtract these right now. So we have negative a third and v naught squared um, plus um, v naught uh, plus one twelve and v naught squared. So. Um, and just uh, you get your final answer. You add these together. And that is your change kinetic energy.